Alrighty, boys, welcome back to Delta Esports Game 3 versus Rise Again. We are going into the third game here. We lost the first one. We won the first, or we won the second one convincingly. And now we're going into Game 3, trying to spoil their guaranteed spot in the championships. First ban. Coco feels good, man. They banned your Kronos. I'm happy about that. Um, we're going to ban the Ratatosker because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So far, he hasn't shown himself to be a competent jungler on anything except Ratatosker and Al Quang, and he did absolutely nothing on Thor. At this point, we're trying to pay him money, like, you know, uh, down low, like, low key, like, here, take, take five bucks. I'm going to PayPal you some five bucks. You want some gems? I can give you some gems. Yo, pick Thor here. All right, pick Thor. So we ban the Alquang, they we ban the rat, they ban Kronos Fafnir. Uh, good bans, we like to play those gods, so that makes sense. Uh, they're gonna first pick Scylla for, uh, for the White Kenyan, which makes sense because that's pretty much the only god he's played the entire game. So, sure, there you go. We're going to go ahead and hover over Freya Guan Yu, because since we made it work with one magical hunter and a Guan, why not make it work with another magical hunter and a Guan, you know? We're looking for strong damage out of our jungle so far with the Guan Yu Shred, so we're not worried about over uh, overbalancing on the magical side. And we're probably going to have a magical mid laner, because Mace likes his mages. So we're going to keep looking in that direction there. We're going to look for... What are they going to pick? They're going to pick a Neath. All right, I'm down. Let's pick the Neath. And they're also going to pick an Odin. That's three leaps. Mm, 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 mm. I smell a gravity surge, baby, because that's an Awilix snap pick. Three leaps... Absolutely, we're going to give Ajax a Willix. He, he runs a perfectly fine a Willix. He doesn't really have any weaknesses in his god pool that I've seen so far. So, why not? It's a great matchup, great pick. Run with it. We're going to go ahead and ban out Erlong because they have first pick after that, and Erlong into Scylla ult is nasty, and we're not giving them that. We also already picked our jungle, so there's no real reason there unless we want to run it in solo. Um which is an option, but we felt that it was way, way, way better for them than it was for us at this point. So we're just going to ban it away, keep it off the field of play. Checking out what they're going to ban here, they're going to ban out Raijin. Okay, it's a good ban, strong mid laner, a lot of early pressure against Scylla, which is understandably something that we should be looking for. Uh, our second ban in the second banning phase here is... <laughs> B -b 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 Why b -b 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 Because b -b 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 shuts down Guan Yu healing and has that really annoying leap. You're thinking, you just picked a Willix. Why don't you want more gods with leaps? Well, the reason is because late game, if a b -b 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 jumps, at the same time one of his carries jumps, you pretty much gar you're, you don't guarantee, but there's a chance that the Willix ends up pulling the Bacchus instead of the carry, which isn't really something we want to see happen because we want to pick on Neath, we want to pick on Scylla, and that Odin, you're never going to get a single jump engage this game, buddy. We go ahead and pick the tier up against the Odin because it worked really well last game, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Also, the tier has another knockup for the Owilix. Since they have three knockups on their team for our Owilix, we figure we might as well draft at least one on our side. Um, let's see what they pick in their last two spots here, and then we do have a counter pick in mid. They're going to go ahead and pick up a Vamana, so the Odin is probably going support then, which I'm fine. We can pick up Ghostwalk first active and be perfectly fine in that matchup. And Lumicide's going to pick up a Kali for himself, which frankly is stupid. Like really really dumb like stupidly dumb you know why it's stupidly dumb because we have a willix please lumicide use your noggin 
But no, really. Like, Willux has an amazing matchup against Kali, because if Kali tries to jump in or jump away, just gets pulled. And, what's more, you can't ult during a knockup, so we just fearless her and kill her during the fearless. That's all we gotta do. So, uh, that's that. You're showing you my wonderful god screen there. My ample Guan Yu skins that I have, all three of them, including the base skin. Let's go ahead and go to the match here. Apparently, Coco has a nasty Freya, too, by the way. I didn't know that he had a diamond Freya with more kills than assists, but... Like, those stats were pretty sexy. I'm not gonna lie. Heading into game here, looks like we're gonna have the same spectator bug, so I'm just gonna bounce out of there, bounce back into there, and now I can float around for free. Woo! Alright. I really wish that I could adjust where these were. I guess I can't, so whatever. Can I rotate? I can't even rotate. Yeah, okay, so. Assisted is just not even good. Okay. We're gonna drop the same kind of wards. Deep soul aside jungle, because we do want to know what they're doing around this area, around fire camps and around mid camps on soul aside. We went ahead and picked the Chaos side again because we liked the second pick in this particular matchup. Pretty basic starts. Coco has gone for, or Coco, Ajax has gone for the Hog this time. Uh, we might look to play a little more aggressive this game, or he might just be trying to secure his own buffs. Also could just be looking for a little faster clear. Um, we do know that they were unfortunately having some lag issues. So they did use a couple of their pauses this game to try to fix those. Uh, they also said they had lag issues in the second game, but they didn't choose to pause at any point in time to try to fix those. So can't really do anything for you there. But uh, they're, they're going to use a couple pauses this game. Let's try to skip through them. They weren't very long. I think they used like a total of two minutes of the first one, like 30 seconds of the second one. So let's try to zip through them here. Alright. Let's take a peeky over on this side, because I usually, I usually sit on this side of the map, because I actually know what happens on this side of the map. Um, one thing my friend strikes 1090 has chosen to go on mark of the vanguard for some infeasible ridiculous god awful reason first friend if you go support please always 10 out of 10 times pick watchers first if you want to build vanguard in your third item slot it is perfectly viable and it does its job well but please for the love of of whatever the hell you worship, don't pick it first in this meta. Please. For your team. Do it for your team. Um, they're going to actually rotate to mid camps here, so I'm actually kind of surprised we didn't look for a rotation not, instead of going for fires. But it doesn't matter because Cuckoo got him anyway, and Kali ate a lot of poke for no reason. Oh, wait, you're Kali. Just to be clear, this isn't played on the Kali gets to pick her target slash stone cutting sword is really buffed patch. So Kali still sucks ass. They decide to start these for whatever reason. Um, they do get them, but that's fine. Uh, they ate some poke doing it. Not a huge deal. We were expecting to get those mid camps, but I mean, for the most part, you're cuckoo. You can just farm for free forever. And we do have faster rotations than they do because they decided to stay and auto attack that creep. Okay, at this point, it's better for you to go and get these back harpies 
faster and not mi and miss that one creep in that creep wave than to get these back harpies late and come to wave late because now we have free mid pressure we have free mid pressure Free med pressure is not a good thing. Um, this rotation was okay by Ajax because he has speed buff and Suku. So he can get to these back camps just as Cuckoo's starting them. So yeah, you know, shows you how slow Cuckoo is. Um, at this point, we were super confused in this lane. Like, why are we out pushing them? And then I pushed Tab. Why are we out pushing them? <laughs> you have Mark of the Vanguard! You can literally bird bomb every wave. You're not going to die because you have Mark. But he never jumps the wave. Okay, if you're Odin in the support role, okay? If you're Odin in the support role against Guan Yu Freya. Now, I know Freya has a lot of kill potential at three minutes into the game, okay? I know that's really scary. But please, just jump the wave. Honestly, just jump the wave. It was a really bad ult for me. I shouldn't have committed another tower. They do make a rotation. I'd probably die here. Yeah. Uh, but Kali did feel free, feel the need to ult. Scylla ult hits him. That was kind of interesting. I thought he was in the air already, but you know, can't do anything. Uh, off to a great start here, boys. We just lost two people in duo. First one was my fault, second one, Ajax. Buddy. Just stand here next time. But I mean either way, if you look at the gold right now. Dead even. We've been out farming them really steadily. The first three minutes into the game. We had a five hundred gold lead. More than a five hundred gold lead. Like that first blood did nothing for them. We have an XP lead still, so mm, I'm not too worried, honestly. We gave up two kills, and we are actually still in the lead, so I'm okay with that. Just gonna fearless, not fearless, I don't fearless things. We're just gonna double assault Kali out of raid camps. Got off to a bit of a slow start here, but we have one Cuckoo, so we're not afraid of late game. Uh, they do have Kali Scylla. Uh, we do have a Willix, so, I mean, early game is better, but we can live in a late game scenario if we need to. And right now, we're perfectly okay with trying to farm for that. First Blood did give um, Lumicide a bit of a lead over Ajax, but it's what he does with that lead that really matters, and he hasn't done anything so far. But we're looking to gank over here because this is new with Odin, and we have a Willix. Uh, we almost kill our Freya, but that's fine. I can just buff my player stats. Look at that healing. Oh yeah, 2.6. gonna clear the wave here. Freya's just coming out of base. I need to back and Freya can get the next wave of herself. Now we see the issue with Mark of the Vanguard. I have 300 gold on this guy. And I have a death and he has two assists. What can you do? Mid lane is dead even. Oh, here's their other claws. Let's zip through that real quick. Nice building trans, not boots. So we're going to try to probably pressure her out here.
Odin's on the left side of the map. Honestly, they spent a lot of time on the solo side of the map, and we recognize that. And we just gave them a passive god. Like, okay. Like, tier, tier is pretty passive, man. No problem. Look over at Duo. Neath is a little bit out of position. Use a couple ults. Knock her out for free. We're not really looking to fight, so we don't have any problem burning those ults for that pick. We got Neath beads as well, so. Whatever. Got both of those. And both those ults that we used are going to come up here pretty short. So. Yeah, another 30 seconds. Chest. Okay, this is a problem for them, right? You have three wo three wards placed by nine minutes into the game. That is not acceptable. Two of them are still on the map, so you did. You, they basically had no vision for the first five minutes of the game, guaranteed. What can you do? I mean, if you can't see anyone coming. Then you're never gonna see anybody coming, I guess. Like, yeah, you need more wards than what they have right now. Um, I have five all by myself, and as a team, we have ten. At ten minutes, yeah. ward a minute. Even that's a little lower than I would like. Uh, free neat there because her beads are still down for two seconds. Ghost Wad gets us out of the Odin cage, no problem, and we can just heal right back up again. Cuckoo does take some poke, but that's all of Scylla's damage because Scylla didn't ult. Because Scylla doesn't know where the 4 button on her keyboard is. A uh, little known fact, actually. So we can just sustain up and farm. Free pick. We really wanted to do gold there, uh, but some of the other too Oh, hi, my name's Odin. Hi, hi. Hi, my, my, my name's Odin. Um, I'm 300 gold behind, but I can still kill you. Just Odin things, man. Just Odin things. GPM wise, yeah, 300 gold per minute is not high enough. Uh, Ajax is really farming well, and that's 400 GPM. And I believe we still have a gold lead. Yeah, we still have a gold lead. Ajax is huge right now. His net worth. Yeah, he's actually, yeah, he's outfarming everybody, which is really good. Uh, time spent dead. Neath. <laughs> and back to the player damage. Neath does have the most player damage. Uh, but that's just because of the early aggression in her lane. Not 
not behind, we're still up farming. Uh, but we think we can still get a bigger lead, which is why we're not trying to force gold and stuff right now. And I'm really wanting to finish Sob before we try and do too crazy. I'm gonna cage in the tier, who's going to just ult away. Cool. Ult for an ult, but really, more than anything, it's wasting Kali's time. Ajax is farming, while Kali is ganking a tier. Oh, by the way, we're also getting gold. In case you didn't notice. Yeah, uh, you know that, 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 uh, dragon thingy that we have on our team? Yeah, it's basically a free hog. So yeah, we just got gold. In case you didn't notice. Just got gold. You know what happened when Kali ganked Tyr? Yeah, we saw that. So we just, we, we just, we just killed gold. Sucks to suck. Alrighty. Farming up, cause that's what Smite is farming up. Cause that's what Smite is. Coco is somehow out pushing the Neath. Oh wait, Neath has Soul Eater. Okay, now it makes sense. Coco is out pushing the Neath because Neath has Soul Eater, so Neath doesn't do any damage. Somebody's pissed. I don't know what those pings were. I also don't know what that... I mean, the Aegis was on the Koop Wolf somehow. And honestly, I don't know why... Or the Scylla ult, rather. So, Scylla literally just ulted the Aegis to Cuckoo. If she waited literally half a second, it was a free ult and a free reset. We lose that fight really hard. But she does not hold... Like, she, know, she knows... She's figured out where the four button is on her keyboard, which is really nice, but she doesn't actually know when to left click after pushing four. So, I mean, that's the major issue right now. Uh, we just have to get some left clicking exercises in. Maybe you should, like, switch up the roles, have Scylla be the ADC for a game. I mean, that'll get you some left clicking exercises. But I suppose you don't want your mid feeding as much as your ADC feeding. So, I mean, that makes sense why you, why you don't do that. But, um... I, I guess I'm feeling really savage today for some reason because it's like I am just going in on these guys. Farming up till gold, probably going to be the call here from us. Okay. Okay, boys and girls, boys and girls, I just I just see some I just saw something, okay? Now, there is an item. It's arguably the best item in the game for supports. It's called Hide of the Urchin. Hide of the Urchin is an amazing amazing item. But the problem is in order to make Hide of the Urchin worth it, you have to get things called kills and assists, okay? You also want to have your Hide of the Urchin online by around 15, 12 to 15 minutes at the absolute latest to really successfully stack it for late game team fights. Otherwise, you're getting it so late that the team fights that you would have gotten those kills and assists in are already happening or gone and the item is irrelevant. 
In other words, you're either going to get it when you're ahead, or you're going to get it when there's a lot of fighting. When you're over a thousand gold behind at the 15 minute mark, building this item is not a good idea. You're not going to get the stacks that make it worth, and it's going to delay your sovereignty and your pestilence, which are the two most important items in the game for a support to have in this healing meta. Okay? Disregarding the fact that you don't have watchers, right? Which is why you're a thousand gold behind. Okay. I'm going to build Pestilence this game, either Pestilence or Bulwark, for the, um, for the Kali. I went Shadow Walk first, so I have to go Shell second. Uh, there will... There is 0% chance that you will ever see me play a game without a shell. Shell is that good. You cannot play a game of Smite as a support without purchasing shell. Unless you are way far ahead. We're looking to pressure out this lane. We have an Olex in the lane. Who's gonna pull the Odin? Oh. Hey, you know that tank item that makes you tanky? But it doesn't make you tanky when you're dead. Okay? And you're not gonna get any more kills and assists because now we can just kill you on cooldown. Because you don't have any you don't have any cooldown reduction. You have a tiny bit of CCR. You have a little bit of health and a little bit more mana. Uh Kali gets a kill on the Koku Khan. Which honestly should have happened a lot earlier, but there's three of us here and we can just run both of them down. Um, well, I thought Kali was going to get out, but not if she took that path. Uh, Vamana's going to ult. Kali's going to die without ulting for some reason. I don't really know why, but I'm okay with it. I'm a little low on mana. That is the one problem with going Pestilence over Heartward. You do run out of mana pretty quick. But Watchers gives me MP5 and mana on minion kills, so it kind of takes care of itself. Tyr's going to push down a tower with a Willix, so we got that going for us. I went ahead and buy, bought Bulwark for the Kali, because if you can delay that Kali killing you if you're her target, then all's well and good for you. Um, I don't know if it shows you where Kali's target is, actually, in the replay. Um, it was Cuckoo. Like, that's why she dove Cuckoo. Honestly, you should be diving Cuckoo anyway, but that's why she did in that particular instance. Again, look at Ward Vision right now. Honestly, that's this team's biggest issue for me now that I'm watching this replay again. Like, they they just don't they just don't have any vision. They really don't. Their support has placed five wards, which is an okay number, but he's not getting any support from this team. It's 18 minutes in the game. It's way too late to start warding now. But it is better late than never. We have about a 3k lead. Let me check out the graphs here. Yeah, we have about a 3k lead. And we're looking to group on gold. I just finished my bulwark. I'm spiking. Um, we check out... Obelix just finished Hydrostar, so she's got a little spike. Cuckoo's almost fully stacked with the Thoth. That's a decent spike. Um... Freya just finished Bancroft, more importantly. So that's a pretty massive spike. And Freya's level 18. Let me say that again. Freya's level 18. Just in case you missed it, Freya 
is level 18. Oh, by the way, you have the awareness of a dead goldfish. There's a tear behind you. So I'm just going to pop Ghost Walk. We can completely ignore the Odin Cage. Scylla does get a reset, but Kali is completely forced out. We can still win this fight pretty hard, because I do have Guan Sustain, and Kali is out of the fight. So it's a 4v4 right now. There's the Neesolt. Nees back out of the fight as well. And Coco is going to go ham in the back line there. We can still win this fight. Kali head to back. Kali's coming in. We're just sustaining up off of Guan. Tear is backed out. But honestly, a 1 for 1 trade when our Cuckoo got picked off for free, holding his Aegis at the beginning of the fight, is perfectly fine for us. That's going to be Kali blink down on a Willix. Going to blink under tower, get the kill on the target. So it, it's not entirely worth it for us. Uh, but they aren't getting anything, right? They, they traded ahead, and they're sitting in mid lane, pushing down a tier 1 tower that's almost dead anyway. So they aren't getting anything from this. They're getting mid camps, right? We're fighting for gold fury, and they take mid camps. I am happy with that. We still have a... Uh, that's, the gold lead went down a little bit, I think. I think it's like 2.5 now. Yeah, 2.5. We have a big experience lead. The gold lead is still in our favor. We can still take this fight. And we still have all of our Kukulkan abilities up. And the only ult that's still down is Coco's. Which I believe has like 40 seconds left? 7 seconds left. Hey, don't listen to me, okay? They're pretty poked in mid. So are we, but we have a Guan Yu. They do not. The Neat just walks way far out of position. They drop down the Odin Ring. We don't have Ghost Walk for it this time, but that's perfectly fine because they stayed way too long. We can shred through this uh, Vamana's protections and uh, health. They're going to push down the mid tower. We're going to get a free Gold Fury. This is brought to you by... 7,000 healing. One Pestilence. No Curses. No Brawlers. No Divines. What are they doing? It's a Guan Yu, for Christ's sake. Please, please have a curse. That Odin should not have built Hog. I'm sorry. No Hog. That needs to be cursed into Med, or I, I suppose it could be Hog second. Because your Vamana has built Shell. <sighs> if you fall in love with the Med, fine. Med, Shell, curse on the Vamana. Or if you really can't get a curse, then the Kali needs to get a curse. You have to have a curse against a Guan Yu. 100%. Zero no excuses. Like, you have to build a curse. Guan Yu is the original, you have to build a curse god. <laughs> Next to Sylvanas, right? So, I mean, that, that's why they're losing. Because they don't have a curse. We're going to go ahead and give the um, speed buff to our Kukulkan. Try to give him a little bit more mobility. More mobility. He's having a little bit of trouble uh, staying alive. Scylla has, has one shot him a couple times. He's just got to make sure you're using your Aegis. Uh, the speed buff's going to help him out a little bit with that, with positioning. So, not a huge issue. We're still in the game. We're leading the game by 7k now with that Golden Fury and the Tier 1 push. And we can group and push more objectives. Honestly, I'm thinking we should group on the Freya. That's Scylla dash. Like, we could go in pretty hard here if we wanted to. I think we're just looking for more objectives. Uh, oh, by the way, Vimana's way out of position. He just walks by us. <laughs> uh, they try to commit on the Coco, he just ults out of it. Still a dash into my ult, which is nice, and then Aegis to my Tally Assault, which is even nicer. Group up for heals. Uh, I shell preemptively. 
he ages the ult, Cuckoo misses the ult, but again, we're still in the, far enough ahead that we can still fight this. They don't have any answer to Blonde Sustain, so the longer these fights are, the better. We group up for tier, uh, tier whatchamacallit, I pop another heal, and we can just cleanly like, disengage and fight constantly and win these fights. I can just keep popping heals. Thankfully, her crush was down, or that was like double kill. But we have Blonde Sustain, so like, we can just stay here indefinitely, keep pushing. We got two kills, there's only three of them up right now, we can heal to about half health in no time at all. Out of combat healing, boys. 12, almost 13k healing. That's a lot of healing. Uh, we're looking to push down this objective. But we don't have any tower damage because we have Freya. Uh, we're just looking for team fights, really. Tune in with Coco. Six one and three slash line. Let's actually check out damage done now that we've had a few fights. Look at that. Neath and Sill are still top of the damage charts. But the problem is like they 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 don't they don't know how to they don't know how to go on. They don't know how to go on. This is Freya, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to I1v1. Freya should probably die here. Uh, so, I mean, a little aggressive on Coco's part. I mean, if they also choose to miss all of their abilities, it's fine by me too. I tried to peel for him, couldn't really do anything. This fight here. Uh, another missed ult, but you got the Aegis from from him anyway. So I mean that's all that really matters. It wasn't gonna do damage if it hit. It wasn't gonna do damage. It missed, it missed, it didn't do damage either way. Okay. Go ahead and push out the Odin, because he's a little out of position here and I can shred through all of his protections. We're just looking for this tier one mid tower. Book got picked early, but we managed to answer back, so no issues there. We can just heal up. I have heals. They heal the minion wave. Only heal in the game other than hell that does that, so OP OP. We can just keep pushing. Um, we're actually looking for Phoenix here because Neath decided that she wanted to step up. We got Neath Ages for free. And we killed her anyway. So Zatman Ages all the way. And we got a phoenix here, I believe. We just need the Obelix to get in there and start fumbling some autos into it. Yep. Meanwhile, Coco is farming. <laughs> and we can push down this tier 1 tower. Really, this game is brought to you by Gone Heels. Uh, Ajax is huge. Mace hasn't been shut down, and Coco's doing a lot of damage, but for the most part, they're trading these team fights even a little bit ahead if it weren't for the healing. Squan heals in that tier med. That's why we're winning this. We're also making better objective calls. Uh, that was a mistake. We shouldn't have ulted that, but... Uh, 
they aren't smart enough to go fire this game. In the first game, we did almost the exact same play, and instead of backing off, they just went straight to fire giant and did it. <laughs> and we didn't have a cuckoo ult to contest it. So we lost the fire. That time we had Ajax on this other map to check it out. Biggest disparity right now, their Neaths 1 and 5 are... Freya is 7 and 2. They can't keep their Neath alive. Neath is actually doing a little bit of damage here, but it doesn't matter. She's dying. Way too fast. She's not getting her damage out. And a lot of that does fall on the support. We're not seeing enough peel from their team, and honestly, from their team comp. Right? Their team comp can't peel. And you're seeing it there. Right? We're splitting up on two targets and killing them both. Because, I mean, right there, look at that. Stella held her ult that entire time, right? Uh, Neath didn't ult. Kali didn't ult. Right, we needed a lot more... They needed to be more concise about when are we fighting, right? Because that was Odin ult, and then five years later, there's a Scylla ult. That has to be... Boom, boom. Also... Three stacks on that height of the urchin friend, not worth it. Alright, um, well, that's our game. I don't think we have to look at damage stats or player stats because, frankly, <coughs> it doesn't matter uh, how much damage they did because most of it was completely negated by Guan, to be perfectly honest with you. GG.